Hey everybody, I am your cook Savannah. We're going over one of the classics, which is broccoli. So I chose broccoli one because it is super cheap. These two heads of broccoli only cost me like 95 cents. Number two, super hearty vegetable. You are going to be really full when you're done eating this. Number three, it is one of the easiest vegetables to get people who tend to be pickier about their food um, to like. I wasn't a picky eater when I was a kid, but when I was introduced to it, my parents smothered it in Velveeta and fed it to me and I was like, yes. So today we are going to be paying homage to that classic broccoli cheese combo. We're going to do something a little more sophisticated, but still easy to do. And we're going to be treating ourselves with uh, a raw salad. That's really flavorful. But again, we're just going to be feeding ourselves a really delicious food and really giving ourselves like a nice, wonderful treat as a meal. Everyone, everyone deserves to treat themselves with really good food. oven heating up to 450 and that will be for our, our cooked broccoli we're gonna be roasting it so during that time we're gonna get started on the salad so what we're gonna do first is we're just gonna cut off the very bottom piece and this is gonna go in our trash bowl we always keep a trash bowl for anything we might be throwing out or tossing away while we are cooking so we keep the space clear and tidy no one likes a messy person no one likes slob. No, that's mean. Why not just make this stress-free, you know? And then each stalk that I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut into quarters. Nope, I don't want it in there. Boop. And as you can see, or this one's a small one, so we'll just cut it in half. Or maybe, as you can see, I'm keeping the broccoli stalks a part of this. And so I'm not wasting anything. Like the broccoli stem is still like super edible. And so it's like, why not? Yeah. Done, ate it. It's so good. It tastes like the top parts. Like these I purchased without the stems already on it. Usually you can get like a stem that's about, you know, this long. And that part's totally edible. You can cut that up and you can fry it. It does not have to be thrown away. That's, that's totally pointless. It's a cosmetic thing more than anything. So once I get it by itself, just cutting in half. Cutting half. And the reason I'm cutting everything like so thin and small is when we put our dressing on there, we're gonna get like a shit ton more flavor. Who doesn't want that? Another important aspect of a salad like this is letting the dressing have time to sit. So a lot of the times, like if you're doing like a, a lettuce based salad, you want to dress it and eat it pretty quickly because the lettuce will tend to wilt. Also, if you are in the kitchen with other people, do not be waving your knife around the way I am right now. That's actually really, really not safe to do. But I'm here by myself, but I'll put it down because I'm going to practice what I preach. But if you have a hearty vegetable like this guy, if you give the dressing time to sit on it, so say like if you made this the night before for like lunch tomorrow, or if you just had time to do something else, like you prepped it and let it sit in the dressing and like went and got ready, that's gonna like allow the flavor to absorb in your little broccoli stems. And it's gonna, just gonna be like more flavorful when you actually bite in, when you bite in to the broccoli. I worked at a deli for a while 
and we would make salads and people would be like, oh my God, I want the freshest one you just made. And it would be like macaroni salads or broccoli or Brussels sprout salads like this. And I was always just like, you're going to get the least flavorful salad if you get the newest one. You always want to get the salad that was made the day before. It's going to be way tastier. All right. As you can see, I gave it like a little bit of a different cutting style. I'm just boop, boop, going down. And we have a lot of broccoli here. Like this is a really big salad. And broccoli will sit in your broccoli will sit in your stomach. This is actually belongs to my salad spinner, but I don't know where I put my other bowl. Now we're moving on to the salad dressing part. I've got a brand new soy sauce here. I'm super lucky to live right next to an Asian grocery store. And so I get like aged soy sauce, triple fermented, that kind of stuff. But like regular soy sauce absolutely works for this. We're gonna do two tablespoons of soy sauce. And then we're gonna do rest of vinegar. Also, you can pick this up at any grocery store. And we're going to do half the amount of soy sauce. So we're going to do one tablespoon to two tablespoons of soy sauce. Da, da, da. One tablespoon of rice vinegar. This is totally an option. You don't have to have this. I get a chili oil from the Asian market I live next to. It's super delicious and it gives it a little bit of like smoky flavor. I love it, but it's not crucial part of this. If you don't like heat, obviously don't put anything spicy in. You know when you order pizza, you get those red pepper flakes. You can utilize those too. Just sprinkle those in, in the dressing. That works as well. We need sugar. Maybe weird that I'm putting sugar in a salad dressing, but it's actually like quite important. If you have like because soy sauce, like, on its own is very, very salty. Because I'm using aged soy sauce, it's going to be, like, way savory. It's going to be super savory. And then we have the vinegar, which is, like, really sour. And so those two together are super delicious. But to kind of mellow that out and make it an easier, like, more palatable... <laughs> it makes it more pleasurable to eat if you add sugar. And so I'm going to do about a tablespoon. I'm not measuring this part accurately. I'm actually not even going to put, sorry, I lied. I only put half of this spoon. I should have measured it. I'm, I'm a total asshole for not measuring. We're going to say two teaspoons. I spent all my time in the kitchen. So in here we have our two tablespoons of soy sauce one tablespoon of rice vinegar, and two teaspoons of sugar. Okay, so I just give that a good whisk to dissolve the sugar, and then we're going to add some oil. I'm just using vegetable oil because it's what I have that isn't gonna be flavorful. I have olive oil in my cupboard, but I don't want that flavor being added to this dressing. One tablespoon. And if you saw the apple video, we're going to be putting the oil into this. We're going to be putting the oil into this dressing the same way. So like just a slow pour. <laughs> I'm going to move the dressing over here. video this is not going to um, completely incorporate the same way uh, the, the oil did into the dressing in the apple video and that's because we had the egg yolk in that dressing that helped like bind all that together um, but this will still get like well enough that it will evenly coat your broccoli 
And if you have this, great. If you don't, still good. But I'm going to add some of that chili oil we discussed earlier. And a little bit goes a long way with this stuff. All right. And then I'm also, I'm not adding any salt to this um, because soy sauce is really salty on its own. So there's just like no need. Okay, we're not trying to soak our broccoli. Um, we just want to get it coated evenly. And then into a bowl. I have sesame seeds and I'm gonna put them on there. Um, but if you don't, again, that's fine. You don't have to buy them for this. All right, so here we are. We got our broccoli salad. Um, and it's really good right now. So now we're moving on to the next thing. Now we are going to do the roasted broccoli. We're gonna do the same thing again. We just cut off that little bit, toss it. But we're not going to be cutting the broccoli the same way this time. So we want bare chunks because we're putting it into a 450 degree oven for 20 minutes. And we want it to come out like nice and soft with a little crisp um, around the edges. But we don't want it to just like turn to charcoal. Basically, we're just keeping everything in its original kind of stock. You can almost even ditch the knife and just break it apart. Now we have all of our broccoli separated. Next thing we're gonna do is get back our bowl. This is the bowl we tossed our broccoli in earlier. I highly recommend if you are gonna be drizzling something in oil before it gets roasted, I measure it out first. It gives yourself an element of control of like how much oil you're gonna be using. And if you pour out too much, you can pour it back in. You're just, you know, little tip. So we'll toss them in the oil. And then as we're tossing, we're going to salt and pepper for these babies. Just a little more. just going to I mean you literally just dump them out onto the tray you put them in the oven and they're gonna go in there for 20 minutes so now we're gonna start the bechamel as you can see on here it's a little each of these lines represents a tablespoon and so we're going to cut one two three four. So we're gonna cut at the third line right here and that's gonna give us three tablespoons of butter to go into here all right so we have our butter going and we have our temperature on low. And a broccoli top. So we're gonna turn off the timer. We're gonna check our broccoli. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful that is. So we've got some browning on the edges. You can hear it crackling. It's still a little tough to poke into though. We're gonna give it some more time. And we're gonna go for that full 20 minutes. Okay, so back to our butter. It's 
melting nicely. So at this point, we're gonna add some flour. Just a spoonful. We're gonna mix it in. And the reason we wanna keep our, the reason we wanna keep our temperature on low is because we run the risk of burning our flour. If you see, there's like not a whole lot of, you know, stuff in the pot. So anything that is here at the bottom is going to heat up real fast. And we do not want charred little bits of roux, which is what we're making right now. Okay, so that is not thick enough for us. We need another spoonful. We're adding in that other spoonful. And we're dropping it in. And we're just moving it around. And we want to make sure all the oil and all the butter are incorporated. Perfect. Now we're going to add our liquid. And with these, it's hard to give like an exact measurement because you're looking for a specific thickness. We will measure out just a little bit at a time. So we're going to start out with just a third of a cup. Okay. Now at first it's gonna be like super chunky and separated and Eventually, the liquid will incorporate. Bam. So now we're gonna add some more. And eventually you'll get to a point where you can just eyeball it and you don't have to worry about, this time we're gonna go to a three quarters cup. You don't have to worry about like exact measuring, but I recommend starting out using measurements just because it's easy to fuck up easy to fuck up. Same thing's happening again. We're getting these chunky bits and as the heat incorporates into this mixture, it will make everything kind of smooth out. All right, so now that we have like more in our pot at the bottom, I'm going to just turn the heat up a little bit just like halfway between medium and low. We still don't want it too high because it's still gonna be easy to burn. That's our broccoli. Oh yeah. Beautiful. All right, it's much easier to put the fork through now. So we are gonna take this out back here on the stove. I'm gonna go back to our mixture. So at this point I'm gonna switch over to a whisk. I generally don't like using whisk in, whisks in the beginning because they get, the flour gets caught at the tip into like a bunch of big balls. So I usually wait until I have enough liquid in there that it's not gonna get all clumpy inside the whisk. All right, so it kind of looks like gravy. We are starting to get some bubblage. We don't want that. We're going back to low. It's time for cheese. So this is Parmesan. We're going to go to quarter cup. Then we have some sliced Havarti but we're not going to put it in like that. I'm just gonna be holding them and tearing them into bits. So like, see like that, plopping it in. Go. All right, and with the cheese, this is starting to get a little thick. And plus, 
as you can see, it's evaporating, so we're losing moisture. The cheese is starting to melt, getting real nice. And one of the reasons I have not salted this yet is we threw in a lot of cheese, and so that's going to give it a ton of salty flavor. I'm gonna go back to, and this is like, sometimes this is a lot of cooking, like you're controlling temperature, you're going back and forth. Um, since we're at the end and we're finishing, I'm probably just gonna turn it up to medium. Uh, and at this point, I would definitely not walk away or take my eyes off of this thing. Maybe one day I'll be able to hire a cameraman. Oh my God, you guys. So this is what you want it to look like. It's super smooth, creamy. It's just drizzling down. You're not seeing any lumps. It's just ooey, gooey goodness. So at this point you wanna taste it. We're also gonna turn the heat off because it's where we want it. So we're gonna taste the bechamel. It's very cheesy, but it still needs more. So we're gonna add the salt in now. And as usual, I'm going to say this is to taste. Start with a pinch, go from there. I will start with two pinches because I know that's what I want. And it's really important when you're making something and you're, you're adding the salt to taste, mix it really well every time you add salt. Because if you don't, you can end up with like a pocket of salt and you're like, oh God, that's too salty or not. Okay, that's perfect. Super cheesy. Mm, so creamy. We're gonna add some pepper again to taste. Pepper is a little easier because you can see when it's incorporated. Oh my god. So good. This is the best thing. Like when you are, if you're eating by yourself, you can just like stand here and dip the broccoli in. Oh, but if you're making it for like multiple people and you do have to serve it, I say still do this, at least for like one or two. You know, cooking is work and it's like, why not reward yourself? And if you've never done this before, like definitely enjoy it. Oh my God. <laughs> Another thing I want this channel to be about is just like, the happiness of cook. I didn't want to say the joy of cooking because that's already taken, but like the joy of cooking, the enjoyment of cooking, the feeding yourself something worthwhile and not just like downing a power bar or go to town on a bowl of cereal, go to town on a mixing bowl of cereal, but also just like fucking feed yourself well. Okay, we're gonna plate it now. And if you make more sauce than you have for whatever you have in front of you, that's fine. This stuff like reheats really well. You can use it the next day. You can put this on an omelet or scrambled eggs. If you don't like making omelets or don't know how to make one. And as somebody who used to just do like the straight up like melt cheese onto broccoli, a thing that's really great about this is with the creaminess of it, it distributes like so much better because when cheese starts to cool, it hardens. And so when you have broccoli on your plate and you just have like straight up cheese on it, it gets into these clumps and you don't get like an even spread of cheese on every bite. But if you do it like this, you get an even spread of cheese on every bite. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. So good. We also have this guy. And this has just been sitting here the whole time, absorbing these dressing flavors, letting them soak into their tiny little bods. Mm -hmm. Same vegetable, but you have two completely different flavor profiles, completely different. So even if like all you can afford to buy is broccoli, and you just like happen to 
you know, you have condiments in your cupboard, look, you got two meals out of this. It doesn't feel like you're eating the same thing every time. Yeah. My Instagram is going to be down below. Definitely like hit me up on Instagram if you make any of these. I'd love to see if you like throw any variation into it. Get creative. It'd be awesome if you subscribed. Keep on cooking. This is weird because I can see myself. I had to cut my hair recently. Before this I had like Little Mermaid red hair, which looked great. But the process of bleaching it took to get there really fucked my hair. And so I had to cut it all off. Unless it's in a mohawk, I don't like me with short hair. Having to like see myself. It's really annoying. 